Hello, everyone. I'm here with Jason Hawley, and we are connecting today to have a conversation about what Jason is doing with evolutionary astrology and what he has chosen to present at our upcoming online conference the first week of October, October 6th through the 8th. So excited to have you joining us, Jason. He's been around for for a while in this work. And uh, so welcome. And um, I really look forward to to this October to come together as a group again. Yeah, thank you. Me too. So how long ago did we meet on the message board? <laughs> That's where I first met you. And it, it wasn't like, right. <laughs> it was probably I... 2010. Yeah, that's that's that I'm almost certain that it was 2010 uh when we met. Uh yeah, that okay. sounds, sounds right. Yep. So mm -hmm. how did you find evolutionary astrology? How did you find the Pluto books or anything that Jeffrey Wolf Green had put out on the planet? How did you discover? Yeah. Well, I uh I think that it was not, it was right around that time. I mean, I had I you know, I grew up in astrology in an astrology speaking family. You know, my mother her mother, her mother, her mother. We were all in the same house. I mean, this is like this is called South Node in Cancer in the twelfth house, right? I've been <laughs> born into this matriarchal <laughs> line, and um, and uh, my great great grandmother was a tea leaf reader, you know, and all of them spoke astrology. Nobody was like a professional astrologer, um, and it was in West Virginia. So there was a although there's a lot of things about that place that people probably have in their minds when I say that. One of the things that's very true in my experience is there is a kind of openness, you know, to to a lot of different things to understand the suffering that people are in. And so um, and there's also an embodied quality, like there's a connection with land there. And so I think that um, so that was kind of the context for me with astrology came in from the beginning. And then uh, really, it was just after I became a therapist that I that I found um, the Pluto books and then also found myself on on the message board that we used to um, be in a great deal back then. I, I was really in it. And, uh, you know, it the way I would say it is that when I that material came, I felt like it was the place in the astrology world that really wanted to to go the deepest, you know, to really understand what are the deepest dynamics that are at play in oneself, in the world, in the soul. And, um, and it, it just immediately felt like that it was a community of people interested in that and of being of service to that. Those are the two things. Like it was like, felt really, and I still feel this kinship with people who are attracted to or practice EA, where there's a very powerful, palpable drive to to get to the heart of the matter and also the a very strong service orient that's just what has risen around the work i you know it's just that's that's the the vibe that i think it carries and so it keeps me feeling a real connection like when you and michelle and ari reached out to me to mention this it was like an immediate like oh yes a family reunion you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, like a family reunion <laughs> Yeah. So I really felt that vibe. And I think, especially being a therapist, it was like, this is the astrology that will help me really grok or, you know, grasp the the larger stories that my clients are inside. That's incredible. I mean, mm -hmm. it, there is so much depth that you can go and and as you evolve in this work, I know for myself that the more I've been through in my life and the more layers we pull back within our story, the, the readiness mm -hmm. that we might feel to go to the next level, the next layer. I mean, we can't mm -hmm. just see it all, all at once, right? We've got to be wow. at our own pace, <laughs> slowly mm -hmm. peeling back, turning those pages, ready to go deeper. Um, you know, there's a lot yeah. that uh, anyone who gets into evolutionary astrology, whether you're, someone wants a reading or is teaching it and has students that are coming forward, there is a readiness, I feel, for people, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. like, they know they're, they're going to go someplace that might hurt or be uncomfortable for mm -hmm. a while. And, but mm -hmm. that's where the greatest reward is felt always. Um, mm -hmm. There's nothing like it. So it's been many years since the last time we were all together live. It's mm -hmm. still meadow outside of, I think it was 2012. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I have the year correct, but it's been many years. Sounds about right. Mm -hmm. And it was instant family connection. 
you know, mm-hmm. we did really have a blast. And so we're hoping to reconnect that energy together. And I always like to observe in people how they take this work and evolve it. And, mm. you know, before we, we, we went live today, I was checking in with you and wanting to know what you were doing. And back in mm. the day, you were using evolutionary astrology with your clients in psychotherapy, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And- it was very much a part of the sessions, a, a ongoing context and ongoing language to, you know, make sense of things together. Yeah. So would you always get people's birth information? Like when you had a new client come in, would that be part of it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was, it was uh, it, like, you know, one didn't always use an intake form, but it was on the form right here, you know, birth data, including time. And then really to say to them, this, the reason I'm asking is this, and, you know, not everybody was, well, to be honest, I would, I really can't think of anyone who was like, I don't want to hear about my chart or no, you know, like, right. and then over time, as I became known for astrology, then everybody came in already kind of knowing that that's what would happen. But yeah. even at the beginning, you know, people who were in, you know, religious worldviews that, that would not support, you know, astrology or notions of reincarnation, or, you know, even they, though, there was that, you know, some, the way I always feel is like, you know, some animal in the sky, you know, some creature in the sky, some creature in the psyche, some, some, per, you know, part of self carrying, you know, deeper knowledge than what they've been in. And this time would be curious enough to sort of say, um, you know, tell me more, like there's a little window. And so the chart is like that, right? It's this little window into more. And like you said, when we were chatting before, like, or I guess you just said it, it we're ready for as much as we're ready for, you know, so it wasn't like a galumph of here's, here's a bunch of information. (laughs) That would be a lot. It was right. It was very much just, okay, you're in this situation in life today. How might be mirrored in past life situations or how might it be mirrored by the, what we can see in the chart and, 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 you know, what might be the, you know, evolutionary opportunity here? What, you know, what is the meaning of this suffering? Um, cause, and that's the thing, I think that's why, again, that's with the EA, I feel a very strong interest in the, in our community of, of helping with suffering and helping people grow and evolve. And, and, um, it's, it's not what I always feel with the approaches to astrology. Like it, it, it varies, you know, there's lots of good people doing lots of good things. And, but I will say, I think there's just a baseline service orientation in this that I felt in the people that really felt like that's the work I'm doing. I mean, what is, I mean, psychotherapy means soul is the Greek word for psyche is one of the Greek words for soul and terapia means actually, it means to wait upon or to attend to, and sometimes to heal, but it's, you know, so it's, it's literally about healing the soul or about waiting. I, I even like that language of waiting upon the soul, you know, like attending to. So, um, so it was just a really natural lens, right, for that, for, for deep work. Um, yeah. Well, there is so much suffering everywhere on this planet. Mm. I'm sure you know, there's always been when we look back in history, but for, for that to be a focus, I can't think of <laughs> a better body of work to be able to help people objectify why they are suffering, right? Mm-hmm. Why they have arrived at this place and how do we move through that? So um you've grown in your own on, on a natural path you've expanded out of that concentrated psychotherapy practice you're doing all sorts mm-hmm. of cool things now can you just mm-hmm. share a little bit about what you're doing and i know you use this work and all that you do but but you've really expanded your reach and mm-hmm. the the way that you reach people so you're helping them mm-hmm. reconnect with their nature and in nature it feels like yeah. Beautiful. I like the way you just said that. Yeah, that's exactly, I think that's exactly because for me, it's really is that thing of, you know, the, you know, the astrology immediately, like as soon as you look at a sky or at a chart that, you know, shows a sky, you know, you immediately see the reality of multiplicity, right? Like that, that we are many things, we are many beings or, or, or from the mythic perspective, we have many different gods and goddesses whose stories we are inside of. Or we have many, um, you know, soul fragments or places carrying, you know, information 
so there's just the manyness of ourselves, like our internal ecosystem. But then there's also the relatedness to the world around us and to to a vibrant world of consciousness. And to me, it, it's just what you said, uh, you know, uh, connecting to their nature and to nature mm -hmm. um, and in nature, uh, being embedded in uh, our relations, all of our relations. Mm -hmm. And so um, so the work that I'm doing nowadays, though, uh, yeah, I don't do, you know, uh, long term, you know, one on one psychotherapy anymore. Um, I do help other therapists with who want to work with, you know, bringing all of this into their therapeutic practice since I did that for a long time. Um, but the main things that I'm up to now, I do a lot of the, I'm still playing with words that feel like they can hold what I'm doing, but immersive, experiential, um, embodied, relational, those kinds of words. And the practices are things like um, you know, uh, having retreats or workshops where people, you know, do astro drama. So meaning, you know, uh, I have Saturn square the moon. I, I don't, but let's say I did, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> sometimes it feels like it <laughs> and we all, and we all have it, you know, every, At some every 14 point. years or so. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so, so, uh, so, you know, one person might play the Saturn, one person might play the moon and, and really it's a way of letting the symbols speak rather than speaking to them or about them. It's like speaking to them and as them and, and really feeling like in your body, what does Saturn square the moon feel like? When can I notice when I'm inside that pattern? And then, you know, how can I use, you know, uh, evolutionary astrology, for instance, to like, say oh what past life complex am i in right or what you know what what sort of uh you know where have i been drawn in and what's the invitation here like what how else could we could saturn and moon experience each other and what's so amazing in the in the in the field that we set up for this type of work is that saturn and moon will usually show up in the complex way you know the where they're more in the hijacked mode or you know kind of possessed by the earlier dynamics but often in the field you know, other ways of relating, creative ways of working and evolving the dynamic will kind of just emerge, like versus the astrologer saying, you know, oh, here's how it could change or here's what needs to happen. The field speaks, you know, the the, the planets speak. Um, and so astro drama like that, um, art making, I, I do a lot where people make art of their placements and then of course, when you look at the art, it's never just what you meant to draw, right? You always see things. <laughs> yeah. You get to see more con or other people look at it and say, oh, you know, they you drew them holding hands, but they don't look like they want to be holding it, you know, or something. Yeah. And and you and it just it gives you a lot of ways in, or even writing and writing prompts like left hand, right hand, in where you can kind of access deeper unconscious patterns with the non-dominant hand. Um all that kind of thing. I, I do a lot with mythology. Um, and for me, the purpose of sharing the mythology is to get a more creative sense of the story that you're in and also feel how it links to the stories that humans have been in all along. Um, and so there's a lot of storytelling. Um, so that's the main thing I do is this sort of experiential work. And then, you know, I do a lot of mentorship with astrologers and groups online and you know, different stuff, but it's yeah. all, so, so it's really moved from, yeah, the one-on-one, -on -one, which I'll still do consultation here and there, but mostly it has moved to groups and teaching and, and learning together. Cause I yeah. learn so much when I watch those psych, right. I'm also yeah, being fed definitely. so much. Def um, definitely. I still learn uh, when I do readings, <laughs> you know, and stuff. Yeah, well, right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Of course, I'll always be learning through other people's experiences and stories. And one of the things that I love so much about the astro drama, how you speak about that or talk about it, someone can hear about dynamics within their life or they can even feel it. But when you're acting out these aspects, these planetary configurations, it moves energy. So it's taking mm -hmm. the emotion within you and you're acting it out, you're moving, you're playing a part. And I, you know, one of the most challenging things, uh, at least from my experience to in evolving is being able to allow yourself to be vulnerable. You drop mm -hmm. into the cancer archetype and mm -hmm. 
to act and out an astro drama, you are on stage, you're in front of people, you are putting yourself out there, you are making yourself vulnerable. Even if you mm -hmm. are acting somebody else's story out, likely it's a part of your own. So oh, yeah. I, oh, you yeah. know, we have to find our way into the water, Jason, right? <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> we have to find our way in. And I always say, you don't swim with your clothes on. So you got to get in there and allow yourself to be vulnerable mm -hmm. with this work. So I love yeah. the way that you've evolved your journey with all of your gifts. And so, yeah. And you talked about suffering and I can't think of a symbol that represents suffering more than Chiron. <laughs> can you, <Yep. laughs> I, I, of course we can, we can make a story for many of them in combination, but Chiron does uh, for sure. People think of it as a wound. Um, but mm. uh, so you've chosen this topic for our conference coming up in October. Mm. And I know you're, ex you've maybe already gone through your Chiron return this year. Is that? No, I'm, <laughs> I'm right inside of it. Yeah, I had, I had the I had the first hit, you know, because it's so slow in Aries uh, that for those of us with it in Aries, you know, we get um, I think, you know, this will go or I know this will go on until the end of almost beginning of 25 for me, 2025. Really? There'll be hit retrograde hit retrograde, you know, kind of like when Pluto takes two years on something. Um, so I'm very much in it. That's part <laughs> of I mean, that is definitely a big part of why. I was drawn to, um, you know, to share on Chiron because I, yeah, you, you know, it, 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 again, it feels like, you know, there's one level of talking about something, um, but there's also a level of talking from it and to it, you, you know, like, like evoking. It. So it, just the whole field that I am in bodily, emotionally, energetically, it's so chirotic. Like one of my things going on right now uh, is that I have suddenly had, it started when, uh, you know, Jupiter was conjuncting my Mars uh, a couple months ago, which of course rules the Chiron and Aries. And suddenly I got this massive boil on my face, like, like, like huge, like it was medieval. I mean, <laughs> it, was like, <laughs> it was so like, holy. Oh my gosh. Like, oh, and then it's continued. Like I, I, so I had to, so with the boil, it taught me a lot of Chiron right there because it was like, I mean, it's su super interesting just from, yeah, I don't know, wound to the head, of course, Chiron and Aries, but, but it, um, you know, it was like inflammation and, um, and, you know, and I, and I had to do all this, you know, to care for it, you kind of have to like put a warm compress every day, four times a day. And so I would, you know, I would say to my partner, like, oh, you know, excuse me, I have to tend my boil. <laughs> But it, it actually had this really interesting effect, you know, because sometimes, you know, Chiron and Sixth House have some things in common. And, and you know, the Sixth, sometimes people, it's hard to see the connections between the associations, you know, but about like a routine and illness. But what I was saying was like illness created routine. It immediately meant that my day, my whole day was structured by the need to tend and, take, and do self-care. Like that was mm -hmm. required. And... And it was not a thing where you go in and, and attack it and, you know, try to change it. You know, that's not Chiron wound, right? Like that's other types of wound, but it's more just like learn how to be with the boil and care for it. And, but then it has continued. I began to get all these outbreaks. I never had acne as a child or anything, but I've had all these things. And, and in fact, it looks to me like the skin where the first one was, and there's more. You know, I can't see anything. I don't are, know. <laughs> No, they've, 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 they've kind of settled down a little, but uh, the skin where the first one was will will not look like regular, you know, I, a scar is probably too dramatic of a word, but and but I find that I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of want it to stay. It, it almost feels yeah. like the Chiron initiation, like, yeah, because yeah, it, it's like a scar. We carry these and, and they don't, they don't mean that somehow, oh, it, you know, I'm, always doomed to suffer, you know, the kinds of things we can get into when Chiron is loud in our psyche. Like, oh, it, to me, it feels more like, no, you're marked as someone who knows suffering. You know, you're, 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 you're carrying a wound, but it's, it's the relationship to the wound is different. And so that's just one way that my body is, is in this. There's so much going on with it, but that one really is alive to me. And you know, I just have been in this this inquiry with Chiron, and and 
uh, even what we were referring to earlier in my work evolution, because it's a 10th house Chiron, and in my work evolution, 10th and 10th, 11th, like it's right, right there. And I feel both of those, but um, in that process, it's been, I feel like I've been in the Chiron side of the archetype. That's a lot about like healing. Right. And, but Chiron also has this mentoring teaching piece. And I've really felt a focus to towards that other, of course, you're always doing both, right? Like they're not really separate, but the mode is different. And I, I always felt like I was like Chiron you know, in the cave at the bottom of Mount Pelion and people <laughs> have to find me and find me in the cave. I never do social media. I don't do all that stuff. Like if you can find your way through the brambles, you know, we'll do some really cool stuff. Oh, okay. And, but now I have become like, you know, it's okay to build a little stone path to the cave. You, you know, it's <laughs> like, it's like, you know, let people know. <laughs> don't make it so hard for them to get to you. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah. With a wall of pretty words and my <laughs> website, which is very hard to like, where is the person behind all these words? <laughs> um, so anyway, um, th that's another way it's really been alive for me. It's like, it's like, you know, and of course, yeah, my, my work has been wound work with people. That's, 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 that's what <laughs> I've been doing. So it's been a lifelong mentorship with that place. I have a question. Did you say you had Jupiter on your Mars when that happened? Yeah, I have a Taurus Mars okay. and uh, it was, it's at, at eight Taurus. And so, um, yeah, the initial mass, you know, just felt so inflammate, big inflammation, you know, like Jupiter, like, <laughs> <laughs> <And> <laughs> it's, it's so literal. It became so literal because I mean, Jupiter expands anything it touches. Right. And so many, mm -hmm. so many of my, uh, at least people come to me when they hear Jupiter, they think it's going to be the happy planet forever. You know, <laughs> it's, it's just, it can be so, <laughs> it can, so can be so not that if you're headed in yeah. a direction that needs to be changed or we will be notified. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Right. right. And the literal is when it really has gotten, you haven't picked it up at other levels. And it's like, I, the, to me, the literal is the, the moment where it's like trying to become undeniable okay. you know like when, when jeffrey speaks about pluto and cat the necessity of cataclysm when you know that that's often what we need in order to say hey something's going on here right. you know and there's no denying it anymore i mean i'm up uh, like you know i i remember that really spoke to me because i have pluto square the nodes you know i have sun pluto square the nodes and that whole dynamic of a deep passion to evolve, but also a very deep resistance and like, you know, trying to sort of skip that over. And so, you know, yeah, I've come to see, think of liter when things get that loud and that literal, it's like, okay, you know, it's really an invitation, right? The symbol is, or the symptom is a symbol, you know, it's, it's an invitation. Absolutely. To, Absolutely. You know, and it's still a mystery to me. I can't say I feel like, oh, now I understand what this is all about. <laughs> that was my next question. <laughs> it really was my next question. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I feel like I'm I'm pretty patient with these. Like I I try not to rush in to figure it out because I'm really trusting like back to what you said at the beginning, like, you know, the psyche is we're ready to know what we're ready to know. And there's a wisdom to to hanging out with it versus trying to control it and fix it. You know, it's like, I just want to, I want to hear from it. Like, what are you saying to me? You know, right. who's trying to speak through my face right now or through my, you know, these <laughs> That's so true. wounds. So Pluto, <laughs> Pluto, uh, cataclysm, we all experience uh, yeah. cataclysms at one point in our life, even just losing a loved one that's in an aging process, dying process. I mean, we all go through it. Some people more Plutonian experiences than others, uh, but yeah. you have Pluto squaring the nodes. Yeah. And yes, Jeffrey taught that um, cataclysms occur because of karmic reasons or resistance to change, right? Mm -hmm. Typically, mm -hmm. or there's slow progressive change where evolution can occur, but that's not cataclysm typically. So I'm sure the one mm -hmm. of the questions to you, that you've asked yourself, because you recognize there's resistance at times, right? Mm -hmm. Where is the resistance, right? With mm -hmm. this, with this. Mm -hmm thing mm. on my face and because it's so i think of skin everything we press is saturn you know it's wrapping yeah. it's holding our emotion in and and the aries mm. everything's trying to move up too sometimes and out the top of our head mm. so um mm. my question to you is because we were taught also that you can't take one symbol in a chart 
and see everything, right? You look at the paradigm, oh, the asteroids mm -hmm. in particular, even Chiron mm -hmm. and some of these other asteroids that we all love to work with are really mm -hmm. like another instrument in the symphony, <laughs> another actor mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. And they can mm -hmm. definitely stand out in a big way through a transit. But is there mm -hmm. another transit, a Pluto transit in your chart in combination with this Chiron? Is there something else working with that? Yeah. Well, I, the, much of what you've said is really intuitively reflected with my chart. You know, one being the Saturn role, uh, you know, with, as you said, with skin and boundary. Um, and uh, Saturn is also part of that dynamic I described. So, I, you know, Pluto, Sun, square the nodes, and then Saturn's right on the south node and the ascendant. So I've often felt that that really shows the picture of, you know, that Saturn and that that the the various experiences in this life and other lives of trying to contain and you know hold and control that's that thought volcano at the root of the chart down there <laughs> and like no 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 of course you know what does that do you plug all the ways the lava is going to come out it's coming out oh right? my gosh <laughs> so so that is the natal and then with regard to the Pluto transit the one that comes to my mind right now um that's just really warming up but that I very much feel is going on is that Pluto is going to be trining my Jupiter uh, cool. I have a two degree in Aquarius Jupiter and it already, you know, when it was in oh, yeah. Aquarius to me, that's, that's, that's operational, even at the end of Capricorn. And so, um, and so for me, what I'm feeling is there's a really strong uh, actual need to, to claim the teachership of thing, you know, and also the innovation of what I'm doing at like Definitely. Aquarius Jupiter yeah. eighth house. Is deeper. Oh, wow. And I'm, I've been really shy of that, right? I have a 12th house south node in Cancer, you know, and I'm fourth house sun. And I'm very like, like the only reason anyone knows who I am is because like different conferences, platforms, EA, all of it, those people said, here's Jason. Like Jason never has said here's Jason. <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm like, and and really had all these like, and then you know how once you are in a a, a uh you know a, a pattern that you haven't yet become really aware of and change from inside the pattern you don't recognize this is my defensiveness you start creating a whole ideology of why this is the way to be right like, <laughs> so i have a, a whole philosophy of like oh this you know uh, what i'm doing is the right spiritual choice and i should be you know and 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 you know and i i think that i'm being challenged and really strongly to like no open that up and come from that place and <laughs> but I tend to overlook trines, right? I tend to be like, oh, show me the hardship, you know, like, yeah. like, and in my own chart, the Pluto sun trine Jupiter, it, it's almost like it's invisible to me sometimes. I don't really recognize that when really it could be a really great resource, you know, you know, in EA, we speak about trines as the opportunity for awareness and consciousness, right? Like, yeah. and, um, and so, so the Pluto coming to the Jupiter, trining the sun Pluto natally, hmm. That's that powerful. Feels like the context. Yeah. So what I see yeah, with exciting. Pluto, Sorry. Pluto can <laughs> exactly hold on for dear life. All that protection, <laughs> the manhole covers right. coming off. Um, but yeah, the Pluto Jupiter conjunction, when I think of that too, because Jupiter co-rolls the second chakra with Neptune. Mm, and that's mm, a very mm. that's the very vulnerable part of our that's the next chakra up, right? So mm. the the Pluto's ruling mm. your root chakra. You've got Uranus mm. in the middle layer. Saturn around that. And so this, all that you've been doing to protect the, the central, mm. the deepest source of power within you to teach and reach mm. people, right? In an innovative mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. not afraid to mm -hmm. die for it this time or mm -hmm. to, you know, some to be raked over mm. the coals or something crazy to happen. But it mm. is a place that you now must enter, of course. And Jupiter is your truth. It's your nature. Mm. You know, it's mm -hmm. it, it's what makes you feel naturally free to be your own vibrational nature without anything wrapped around it. So I feel mm -hmm. like when Jupiter comes, excuse me, Pluto comes over that Jupiter, it will be mm -hmm. a, an opportunity to, to remove everything that's in the way. And, you know, mm -hmm. your whole signal is going to change. It's going to get louder, uh, mm -hmm. you know, vibrationally and everything else. And I love that they're all in water houses because that is mm -hmm. the way that you do reach people with your compassion, 
sens mm -hmm. sensitivity, even your ability to laugh at yourself, your ability to mm -hmm. laugh at your own trauma with the Jupiter and Aquarius in the eighth. I mean, you do, and it oh, makes yeah. it makes you so yeah. relatable, Jason. It just does. It's like <laughs> he knows how I feel. <laughs> he knows how I feel. So I love that so mm -hmm. much about you. Um, you. What? So we know that you're in this Chiron journey and mm, it makes mm. it so mm, natural and effortless really to talk about how you feel about it. So you can help other people understand their Chiron return or what this archetype means for them. So um, tell us, you don't, I don't want you to give it all away, but what's your lecture about mm. a bit? Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I titled it, you know, Chiron and the compost bin. You know, uh... <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> Jupiter, see, you're always making <laughs> You are. <laughs> because in part, what I feel like a lot of times with the wound or with that, you know, the sticky quality of it, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's something though about that, you know, with trash, with garbage, with things we want to get, we want to get rid of, you know, um, and there's often a, a notion of getting rid of that's like people use words like clean and clear and you know all of those types of things and those are that's one way to look at it but a chiron way is probably more the junk that you're getting rid of can be transmuted to something healing right like like chiron is the wound and it is the healing it's both it's the alchemy of that in some way and so mm -hmm. um really that patient tending of the wound really lets it's medicine come and kind of like what I'm saying with the face, you know, it's like if I'm patiently tending it while I'm doing that, I also get information of what is this, what else is this, what else, you know, what, who, who am I caring for here? Right. And, um, and so, uh, so it's that, that compost imagery for me, I just think there's so much in the world that needs to be composted, right? There's <laughs> belief systems that really need to be composted, oh, yeah. right? <laughs> a lot of the mythology that I work with so passionately, but a lot of that mythology or all of it is in, is riddled with patriarchal stuff okay. all through it, right? I mean, I mean, I, whenever I teach it, I always have to like back up three steps and say, okay, first we got to remember where these Greeks were when they were telling all these stories and that they were all men and they were all able to write, which means they were super duper privileged. Like, so we got to get underneath all of that stuff. <laughs> and then we can still see, though, that even from their position, they could see into the myth. They could see into it, but but only in a limited way. And and so it's, the more we can compost the stuff that doesn't serve, you know, and, and to me, it's a very personal woundedness. And like you said, vulnerability, like mm -hmm. like there's something, you know, about vulnerability with Chiron that is really that is the alchemizer from the wound to the medicine, you, you know, that willingness to feel it to heal it as they used to say you know like oh, like yeah. to really like there's something about Chiron that insists that you're going to yes. have to feel it right yeah, yes, absolutely. yeah and you don't get to you don't get any quick solution you know and no, and the other no. thing I don't want to yeah <laughs> it's like you, you know it's also kind of a uh you know Chiron the mythology you know in mythology Chiron you know was wounded in the leg and basically lived with a limp you know, his, and yet he was of service to everyone else, right? He was able to give medicine to all the others. And so there's also this thing of, of living with, you know, your own imperfections, living with your own wounds. And without this, like, you know, idea that we're supposed to be done, you know, it's, it's, it's how do you live with it and live creatively with it. And, um, so the kinds of stories that I'll share from people's charts and, and you know, this is as much as they're getting of me. Okay. <laughs> I love it. I can't wait to, to you till but you can show this, yeah, yeah, the stories with the chart and the Chiron, how that plays out. I remember when I first discovered that my Chiron was exactly conjunct my Pluto polarity point. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. I see. Okay. Right in the ninth right. house. Yeah. So, right, right. You know, yeah. Really, the whole this whole story, wow. and you can see it other places. But lifetimes of hiding, right? Just mm. petrified mm. to just be my my honest, authentic self. What will happen? Mm. So, but mm. I remember early on seeing that and saying, "Okay, <laughs> I've already got these skip steps happening and everything else. Now Chiron's parked on the door that I want to go through." <laughs> you know? It was hard enough dealing with the Saturn skip step. I was just talking to Laura about skips, skip steps the other day. Uh, right. And so, but yeah, it's, um, it is another very powerful symbol to reemphasize the need to, 
to feel everything, to feel it all the way through, to not avoid, you can't escape mm -hmm. this. Yeah, 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 and especially across from Pluto. Yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> you're like, hmm, maybe like, another one. Feels good. <laughs> yeah. Another case yeah, study for Jason, but <laughs> no. yeah, right, right. yeah. I mean, that's the beauty, though, too, is that we can't escape. That's great, right? I mean, I mean, it's horrible. If, you know, we need to feel that, but but there, you know, there, and it's so funny because when you said you said something, you said the. Uh, you know, great, there's Chiron at the door I'm trying to go through. And I was thinking how the glyph of Chiron, you know, if you turn it on its side, it looks like a skeleton key, you know, like a key. Yeah, a key. Um, and, you know, Chiron's like this key. And and the question is how to experience that, right? Like, like how, how do we, how do we get access to what, whatever that key will unlock? And, and to me, again, it's, it's vulnerability. It's really being in it. And, and, and being in it without forming lots of story around it. Like one yeah. of the things I really admire about Chiron from the myth is, you know, he had a wound and that was that. Like so he was <laughs> neither in, in denial of his wound, but he also didn't become defined by his wound. Mm. You, you know, it's like, it, it's like there's a, a relationship that's an ongoing. That's part of why, yeah, I don't have a like full notion of the story of this and don't think I need it. Because in a way that lets it keep speaking to me, that lets it keep giving me medicine, you know, and um, and I I don't have to figure anything out. I have to feel it out. Okay. And of course, I'm speaking from my way in the world, and you know, we all do this differently. But um, mine's pretty emotional. So uh, and but I have found that that has helped me to work with people with Chiron because they, as you said, they feel met in that um, that place of genuine suffering where. Even picking up psychology words like trauma and PTSD, all of which can be useful stories, um, but they can all also become identities and and you know prisons. You know, they, they, oh, stories totally. can liberate you or they can imprison you, right? That's and true. We, we astrology can do that. Like you can use it in a way that narrows your you know way of seeing your life, or one that really you know opens you up. And so, I think that's. Uh, that's part of the kind. So, so it'll be in that way. The, the main thing I'll, I'll share a little bit with the myth, but it won't really be focused in the myth. It will be much more in the dynamics that we, I mean, you're always in myth and you're always in the dynamics, but you know, it's <laughs> like the, the, you know, they, they don't go anywhere, but the focus, you know, we'll, we'll be, you know, really looking at Chiron in the context of people's own evolutionary journeys. Awesome. Um, yeah. yeah um the body doesn't lie but it sure speaks to us right <laughs> that is so right powerful. yeah perfect <laughs> there's totally. this yeah it really this is great quote um clarissa pincola estes women who run with the wolves in her book mm. there's a chapter it's 13 battle mm -hmm. wounds and mm. she says mm. uh like with with changes of the weather a wound can ache again you know like when you break a bone Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I mean, okay. yeah. And, and true. Yeah. Right. So with changes of the weather, the wound can ache again, but it's important mm. to remember that in tensile strength, a scar is tougher than skin. Mm, 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 he said, mm. I kind of want that scar, you know, mm, to, it's just yeah, like, exactly. it's like your badge mm. of honor. I've been doing the work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I just love that to not be afraid of what, you know, what is left from the work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right yeah. and we right. are stronger for walking through the fire we are stronger for just standing in it as long as we can be in it and take breaks yeah. when we need to i mean just be compassionate with ourselves um mm -hmm. but i the other thing too is that you and me and and anyone else we're all created uniquely and we we were told um with this work that the soul is like a fingerprint no two are alike mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So our, it's our responsibility, really. And our real des our, our, our sincere desires at the core to just be who we are naturally, to not have to mm -hmm. apologize for it, or, mm -hmm. you know, and so mm -hmm. that's where the real freedom lives. But the only way to get back to our true nature is through the swamp, <laughs> his, his through, you know, tending to the, the wounds and finding out why they're there and where's the medicine. So, and, and loving, loving those places in ourselves that, that struggle with those you know, it's that like like for me in a way it, as I've been in this transition you know professionally it, it's like 
one of the things I really had to ask is, you know, what is the what is the reason I'm doing it? You know, what what is what am I up to? And of course, there's no final answer for that for me at least. But um, but love is the real one that speaks the most to me. You know, like how do we come to love? You know, all these places in ourselves, including the stinking wound, right? You know, like the chiron. Like the putrid smelling, you know, it's like, you know, because again, if we use the compost metaphor, that will become life, right? That'll feed life. That'll feed a flourishing, like incredible it, metaphor. It's, a, it's amazing. I mean, you know, just, I was just in the Pecos wilderness uh, on Sunday, um, uh, this amazing place that, that not a lot of people walk in really. And, uh, and, you know, one of the things that one of my friends kept drawing attention to was all the dying tree or, you know, the trees not dying, just dying naturally as part of their, you know, life cycle in the, in the forest and, um, and lightning struck ones and just, just all these different processes of decay that were underway. And yet decay is giving of life, yeah. you know, like they, they, they're giving of them, you know, they're, and, they're, and it actually reconnects them, you know, to the, to that, which gave them birth. And right. um, so there's something in that, right. That, that like engaging that, appreciating that, you know, um, loving, loving that. And recognizing all the little creatures. <laughs> <in it. laughs> yeah. Recognizing. It. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because I was kind of, that wasn't where my attention was that particular moment, but every time he would do that, it was like, it felt like it really was life affirming to acknowledge the mm -hmm. decay, the wound. Yeah. It's life affirming it yeah. more life, more connection came out of it. Yeah. So bringing everything full circle and, <laughs> you bring it full circle to love a return mm. to love which is pisces the polarity of that sixth house and mm. ultimately mm. you know when we when we are trying to heal these wounds we're trying to return to ourselves our whole the wholeness within us and thus our holiness mm. and mm. to that which created us which is love it is pure and so yeah i'm um, to endure to appreciate to uh, be patient mm -hmm. on the journey to be patient, to take the time necessary. Patience is a good one. Yeah. yeah. That's why this transit's so darn long, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. I think he drags his feet in Aries because Aries is so like, let's do it. Oh, that I, makes I, sense. I, right? you know, I never thought about that before, but just talking about you right now, I'm like, oh, yeah, it, it, you know, you got to, it's a good, it's a, it, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the first thing of Aries to slow down, but no. Chiron. <laughs> Chiron has a limp. If he runs, he's going to fall, right? Like it's not going to work that way. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> so it's really, um, so yeah, that's the general field of it. Uh, you know, the, 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 I love the, it. The, the, I love the it. Yeah. Uh, so I think between now and the time of the conference, you're going to have some more stories to tell us. <laughs> I, <have a> feeling. <laughs> I think some more Chiron stories and <laughs> you'll be telling us and we look so forward to to sharing a space with you and to reconnecting as a community and I'm, I just appreciate you so much and love the work you're doing for others uh, it is a karma yoga uh, you are mm. a soul in service a beautiful soul in service so thank you for that Jason and for sharing some space mm. with me today and for being part of the evolutionary astrology community. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thank you. No, I'm really excited to, to, to be there and be here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Until <laughs> October. Namaste. Okay.